the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's begin our reflection with a scripture passage from the book of Exodus, chapter 23. See, I am sending an angel before you to guard you on the way, and bring you to the place I have prepared. Be attentive to him, and heed his voice. Do not rebel against him, for I will not forgive your sin. My authority resides in him. If you heed his voice and carry out all I tell you, I will be an enemy to your enemies and a foe to your foes. My angel will go before you. Dear brothers and sisters, right now large parts of the world are greatly affected by the coronavirus disease, which has far-reaching consequences on basically on all aspects of our lives, whether social, economical, political, and even religious. Now, besides all the natural hardships, the Catholic faith will have to endure a tremendous spiritual privation that is being deprived of attending Holy Mass and receiving Holy Communion. We know that God allowed all this to happen. The question many raise is, why? We cannot finally answer this question, but one thing is sure. St. Paul tells us, we know that all things, and we may include even plagues, work for the good for those who love God. So we must see this global crisis as God's invitation to seriously examine and reform our lives. St. Bernardine of Siena said that God uses three scourges to chastise people and nations and to bring them back to him. The first is war, the second is plague, and the third is famine. These three scourges we find throughout Holy Scripture. What does it mean for us? Holy Scripture tells us, Return with your whole heart to the Lord, put away your foreign gods, and worship Him alone. Whatever temporal consequences this virus will have, if we all strive to reform our lives, then the crisis will become a time of grace for which we will thank God one day. A little over a hundred years ago, before the Blessed Mother appeared in Fatima in 1917, the angel of Fatima appeared before her in 1915 and 1916. And especially the apparitions of 1916, um, they simply were to prepare the children for the revelation of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It was the middle of World War I. In the instructions, the angel and Mary linked the end of the war to prayer and sacrifice. Our Lady also foretold that if there is no conversion, another even greater war will follow. And this was then the Second World War. Francesca and Jacinta Marto, they died soon after the end of the war as Our Lady had foretold. What was the cause of their death? These two siblings were victims of the great 1918 influenza epidemic. Right after the war, large parts of the world were befallen by the Spanish flu. Wikipedia says, Lasting from January 1918 to December 1920, it infected 500 million people, about a quarter of the world's population at that time. The death toll is estimated to have been anywhere from 17 million to 50 million and possibly as high as 100 million, making it one of the deadliest epidemics in human history. End of quote. Note, Saints Francesca and Jacinta in their short lives had been confronted with a world war and one of the deadliest epidemics ever. The scourge of war and plague had given them the opportunity to offer their lives heroically for the salvation of souls to the point that the Church canonized them. In fact, they are the only canonized children in the history of the Church. Pope Pius XI still refused the initiation of a process of canonization for the children because he believed that the two children could not fully understand heroic virtue or practice it repeatedly, both of which are essential for canonization. But the Church then learned more and more, and then John Paul II finally beatified 
the two young saints in the Shubili year of 2000 on May 13th. And Pope Francis, as we all know, canonized them on May 13th, 2017. As I mentioned earlier, the angel of Fatima had appeared to the children Lucia, Jacinta and Francesco. Lucia at that time was nine years old, Francesco eight years old and Jacinta was only six years old. The angel appeared in 1916 in spring, summer and fall, and he prepared the children for the message of the Blessed Mother. The three apparitions of the angel profoundly marked and changed the lives of the children, directing them to a radical commitment to give all to God and to save as many souls as possible. So in this talk, I would like to share with you the basic lessons we can call it the ABC of the Christian life which the angel taught the children so effectively. These lessons we all should take to heart now during this crisis especially. What the angel of Fatima taught the children in their broad vocation, our guardian angels wish to teach each one of us on a daily basis for our spir spiritual growth and our path to holiness. holiness. Therefore, I would like to ask you really to be conscious of the presence of your guardian angel, looking at him while listening to this conference. Maybe one quote from the Catechism to underline the importance, the key role the angels play in our lives, after our Lord and Our Lady, of course, always. The Catechism teaches in 336, from its beginning until death, human life is surrounded by the angel's watchful care and intercession. That means from the first moment of our conception until our last breath, we are surrounded. We are surrounded constantly 24-7 by angels, which their watchful care and intercession. The Catechism continues to say, Beside each believer stands an angel as protector and shepherd leading him to life. That is the main mission of the angels. Not only that they help us to avoid a car accident or find our parking spot, far more they have the mission to lead us to eternal life. Let's look now at the first apparition in spring from spring 1916. Sister Lucy writes in her memoirs, We spent the day at the east side of the Cabeso among the rocks. We ate our lunch and said our rosary. I'm not sure if it was said in the way I've already described, saying just the words, Hail Mary and our Father on each beat. So great was our eagerness to get to our play. So the children, in order to shorten the time of the prayer, they simply prayed Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, ten times for each decade. And then the Our Father, only Our Father, and probably they finished the rosary in about two minutes that they could go back to their, to their games. When we had finished our prayer, we started to play pebbles. After a few moments, a strong wind began to shake the trees, and a young man, about 14 or 15 years old, whiter than snow, transparent as crystal, when the sun shined through it and of great beauty appeared. He said, Do not be afraid. I am the angel of peace. Pray with me. Kneeling to the ground, he bowed down until his forehead touched the ground and made us repeat these words three times. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. You see here, the angel is very short, but very to the point. In this lesson from the angel, the angel assures the children that there is nothing to fear because it is the angel of peace. The world at that time was at war, but the angel teaches us that we must not fear. The psalmist tells us, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand fall at your right. You it will never approach. Upon you no evil shall fall, no plague approach where you dwell. For, for you has, he has com commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. Fear not of the angel is like a command to the children. 
the angel wishes to take away their fear. And this is a characteristic of the angels we find throughout scripture. The angels know that fear can do great harm to our souls. It paralyzes us and hinders us to do good and to persevere in the good. The angels know that when we are chained by fear and worries, we are not free to see clearly. We are not free to love. We are not free to commit ourselves to God and his plan for us. Rather, we are driven by our fears. The example by Excel laws is when the angel Gabriel appeared to the Blessed Mother. The Blessed Mother was greatly troubled by what the angel said to her. And when the angel saw that Mary was troubled, he encouraged her. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. So the angel supported Mary, dispelled her fear and brought peace to her soul. And in this way now she could calmly and joyfully say yes to God's will to become the mother of God. In order to give our free obedience to God, we must be free of fear. This was demanded for the mystery of the incarnation especially. Actually, there are a series of other events where the angel took away the fear of people they visited. St. Joseph, for example, after he found out that Our Lady was with child, he decided to divorce her quietly. But now the angel then appeared to him and said, Joseph, do not fear to take Mary into your home. To Zechariah the same, do not be afraid, your prayer has been heard. To the shepherd in Bethlehem, do not be afraid, tonight the Savior is born. To the woman at the morning of the resurrection, do not be afraid, he is risen, and so on. Even our Lord had an angel coming to him to help him in his most fearful moment of life. When our Lord entered into his agony, he was afraid. The burden of all our sins was so heavy, and he prayed three times to the Father, Father, take away this chalice. It is so heavy. And we know the Father did not take away the chalice, but instead he sent an angel to strengthen our Lord. And then with this new strength, our Lord was ready to embrace the cross and to save us through the cross. And this was given to us as an example. And we are afraid when we are discouraged, when we are weak, and we persevere in prayer, then God will send his angel to strengthen us in all our needs. So, very important, do not be afraid. Our guardian angel wants to comfort and encourage us when we are troubled and are afraid. Right now, you may fear to contract the coronavirus yourself, or one of your loved ones may contract it. You may fear an economic recession. You may fear losing your job. You may fear losing comfort and life opportunities. You may fear not seeing your kids or parents due to the mandate of social distancing. So there are so many fears people are driven by. But the angel of Fatima and our angels say to us, do not be afraid in this crisis. Do not be afraid of sickness. Do not be afraid of the cross. For you have found grace with God. Now the first step to obtain or persevere in that peace is prayer. And therefore the angel invites the children after he had told them not to be afraid. The next sentence is, pray with me. And then they learn both a prayer and how to pray. It is a prayer of adoration and reparation for the salvation of souls. My God, I believe. I adore, I hope, and I love you, and ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. There are so many people out there who do not believe, do not hope, do not love. In this time of trial, we should not seek worldly distraction. We should not listening or watching constantly the news. This will not take away our fears but it may even increase our fears. Yes, we can keep being informed what is really necessary, but then let us all the more turn to God in prayer in, prayer in order to intercede. The psalmist says, Our help is in the name of the Lord, not in the news, not in worldly undertakings. 
If we focus too much on the news, it will somehow paralyze us, at least spiritually. And if we look too much on the temporal impact, it may seek our salvation alone in human undertakings. This crisis, we must understand, is not only a humi humanitarian crisis, it is also a spiritual battle, a great chance to turn back to God. The first commandment says, you shall love the Lord your God, adore and serve him. This is what we need to learn anew. Adoration. Adoration of God is our very first duty and vocation as creatures. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. The angels proclaim. They give us the example. Like the children of Fatima, in this time of great trial, should pray and adore in union with Mary and the angels, so that with, the, with their help we may be able to grasp more fully the meaning of these words, and then to offer due worship to God. Now this first visit of the angel obtained for them intimate graces of peace and joy, in spite of the war. Sister Lucy writes, the peace and happiness which we felt were great, but wholly interior, for our souls were completely immersed in God. Now a few days after the first apparition, they recovered along with their normal state to their old customs, including their games and chants. That means the extraordinary mystical graces did not transform them at once into adults, spiritually speaking. They remained true children and quickly resumed their lives as young shepherds. They were now certainly a little bit more pious, probably they prayed the rosary now fully, but still the old habits had them back. And this is a little bit like ourselves. Especially when times are prosperous, we forget prayer and we forget also our call to, rep to make reparation for our sins. So now let's move to the second apparition. One day, when the children were playing, the angel again appeared and almost reprimanded them. What are you doing? he asked them. Pray, pray very much. The most holy hearts of Jesus and Mary have these signs of mercy on you. Offer praise and sacrifices constantly to the Most High. This is also a wake-up call for each one of us. We live in this world. We have our daily routine, prayer, work, recreation. But also we need to check frequently whether we truly realize the urgency of our calling and our mission. Do we pray and sacrifice as much as we should, as much as we can? There are so many unbelievers, there are so many people who are in trouble who need our prayers and sacrifices. Lucy was always very practical and so in regards to these few words of the angel she asks, how are we to make sacrifices? And then the angel said, make of everything you can a sacrifice and offer it to God as an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended and in supplication for the conversion of sinners. You will thus draw down peace upon your country I am its guardian angel, the angel of Portugal. So again, very few sentences, few words relatively spoken, speaking, but packed full of meaning. So the angel speaks about sacrifice. His teaching is key to growth in holiness. To live a life of sacrifice for the love of God and souls is so important. We are, we are all called to make of everything an offering to God. Often when people hear about sacrifice, they first think on pain, suffering, something that is really a hardship for us. But sacrifice does not necessarily mean or imply suffering and pain. Sacrifice comes from the Latin sacrum facere. It means to make holy. So simply everything we order to God, we give back to Him, is a sacrifice. So for example, there are sacrifices of joy, sacrifice of thanksgiving. 
we can have a good steak, a good ice cream, and we can say, thank you, Jesus, for this good ice cream, for this good steak. It's a sacrifice of thanksgiving, pleasing to God. Of course, more pleasing to God are those sacrifices which really cost us something. But in general, we should make sacrifice of everything, a sacrifice of everything. Beginning, beginning in the morning when we get up. Jesus, I offer you now getting up from bed as a sacrifice of love for the salvation of souls. Then the angel distingu dis distinguishes between two kinds of sacrifice. The sacrifices we choose and the second kind is the sacrifice God sends us. The first kind is very important. We should grow into this sacrificial spirit through making constantly sacrifices. Not huge sacrifices, we don't need to scourge ourselves, but little sacrifices, little renouncement, little acts of love. For example, we all like food, I believe, so we could simply make now the resolution from now on, I will not take any meal without making one little sacrifice. For example, in the morning when you like three eggs, take only two and say, Jesus, I renounce one egg for love of you, for the salvation of souls. Also, when it comes to sit at table, we can take the last seat and sit where no one else wants to sit. Or we can do the dishes today, we can clean the toilet. We can maybe call somebody who is in need, who is in the hospital with sickness. We can renounce television, surfing in the internet and so on. So there are countless opportunities every day where we can renounce and make little sacrifices, sacrifices we choose. But then the angel goes on and says, above all, that means this is even more important accept and bear with submission the suffering which the Lord will send you. And these letter penances are the hardest to offer as a gift, but they are also have the most value. To be clear, we need both kinds of sacrifices in order to build up energy, to build up strength. We need to train ourselves by voluntary sacrifices. And then when God will send us his sacrifices, then we will be ready and have the strength to carry them out. Dear brothers and sisters, it remains the same as it was 100 years ago. Sacrifice accompanied with prayer are the way, the only way we can draw grace and peace upon our country and families. Sister Lucy commented later on the effects of the words of the angel of making a sacrifice of everything. She said, these words made a deep impression on our minds and hearts, like a light making us understand who God is, how much he loves us and desires to be loved, as well as the value of sacrifice, how pleasing it is to him, and how on account of it he grants the grace of conversion to sinners. For this reason, from that moment, we began to offer up all that mortified us, and to remain for hours with our forehead touching the ground, repeating the prayer the angel had taught us. This lesson of the angel brought now a transformation to the children. From now on they will not go back to their old ways. Prayer alone is not enough to be transformed. There must be added a great light of sacrifice. Our Lord said, that if we wish to be his disciples, we must renounce ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. Sister Lucy emphasizes here the enlightening experience. Now they understood with all the fibers of their being who God is, how he loves us, and desires to be loved, as well as the value of sacrifice. This teaching on sacrifice brought light, pure light, into their souls. That is also how tradition understands the cross. The cross is not darkness, the cross is light. Once we embrace our cross, do not only drag it, but really embrace it freely and lovingly, 
then it becomes pure light. Then we see more clearly and then we know really the priorities in our lives. The priorities are not fun, the priorities are not being happy in this world. Pr the priorities is to adore God, to love Him with all our heart, to serve Him and then also to bring as many souls to Him. Yes, sacrifice is a great light. The cross is a great light. It gives guidance, resourcefulness, decisiveness to the soul to walk in union with Mary and our guardian angel in the footsteps of our Lord. In this lesson the angel also revealed himself as the guardian angel of Portugal. This is an occasion to reflect on the fact that every country has a guardian angel. God has also assigned a powerful guardian angel to, to the United States, which we should venerate and invoke in regards to the good of our country. We can also invoke this guardian angel of the United States to assist every citizen here in the country in this corona crisis. Now let's move to the third apparition. At the third apparition, the angel teaches the children another prayer. It is also a prayer of preparation. This time the children prostrate before our Lord in the Most Holy Eucharist. Sister Lucia writes, the angel was holding a chalice in his left hand with the hose suspended above it, from which some drops of blood fell into the chalice. Leaving the chalice suspended in the air, the angel knelt down beside us and made us repeat three times. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly, and I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifference with, with which he himself is offended, and through the infinite merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg of you the conversion of poor sinners. So the angel of Fatima taught the children how to make a communion of reparation. In Holy Communion, Jesus gives himself to us with his body, blood, soul and divinity. Jesus tells us in the Gospel of St. John, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. It is not possible to have a union of love more profound and more total. Jesus in me and I in him. The prayer of the angel prayed before the Eucharist teaches the children to offer their own sacrifices in union with the infinite merits of the cross of Jesus made present in the most holy Eucharist. It is the highest reparation that can be offered, the sacrifice of God himself, and gives merit to our own sacrifices. Further, through the merits of Jesus and Mary, the children are taught again to intercede for sinners. Then rising, the angel took the chalice and the host in his hands. He gave the sacred host to Lucia and shared the blood from the chalice between Jacinda and Francesco. And when he did so, he said, Take and drink the body and blood of Jesus Christ, horribly outraged by ungrateful men. Make reparation for their crimes and console your God. As I already mentioned, besides all the natural hardships, the Catholic faithful have to endure a tremendous spiritual privation that is being deprived of attending Holy Mass and receiving Holy Communion. Most bishops around the country have cancelled all public Masses, and so in this time of being deprived of Holy Communion, we all will hopefully realize how much we need Holy Communion and that without it, we cannot spiritually survive. Most priests continue to offer Mass daily and while you may not be physically able to attend Mass, our guardian angels, our heavenly companions are not bound to stay home, but they are eager to bring us all the graces God offers us through the Holy Mass. And therefore I encourage you strongly not to forget to send your guardian angel to Holy Mass. Colonel Vincent Nichols, Archbishop of, Archbishop of Westminster in the United Kingdom, he addressed last week the faithful of, of his diocese and recommended the same pious exercise. He said, I was 
given this prayer a few days ago. It touched me deeply. It is a prayer for our times. So the Archbishop said, it's a time, excuse me, the Archbishop says, it is a prayer for the time of this coronavirus crisis. And the prayer is as follows. Dear Guardian Angel, go for me to the church. There kneel down at Mass for me. At the offertory take me to God and offer Him my service. What I am, what I have, offer as my gift. At a consecration with your seraphic strength adore my Savior truly present, praying for those who have loved me, for those who have offended me, and for those who now deceased that the blood of Jesus may purify them all. During Holy Communion, bring to me the body and blood of Jesus, uniting him with me in spirit, so that my heart may become his dwelling place. Plead with him that through his sacrifice all people throughout the world may be saved. When the Mass ends, bring home to me and to every home the Lord's blessing. Amen. In his time, when we cannot go to Mass, the faithful at least, the bishop strongly recommend that we make spiritual communions. According to St. Thomas Aquinas, spiritual communion consists of an ardent desire to receive our Lord Jesus Christ in the Most Holy Sacrament. And the advantages of this mode of communion are very great. St. Catherine of Siena was shown in a vision how precious one spiritual communion can be. Again, the value of a spiritual communion depends on our desire. As soon as we desire to receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, Jesus comes to satisfy our desire by way of spiritual communion. The psalmist says, for he satisfies him who is thirsty, and the hungry he fills with good things. To practice it, we do not need to be in a church. Our most faithful companions, the holy angels, are bringing Jesus to us. If not in sacramental form, like the angel Fatima did, they can bring Jesus in a spiritual way. So let us often make spiritual communions during the day, even we are not able to receive our Lord sacramentally, we nevertheless can receive him spiritually. And if our desire is intense, then spiritual communion can even have an effect on our soul similar to sacramental communion. We also talk briefly about communion of reparation. Normally communion of reparation is based on receiving our Lord sacramentally. And since we are not able to receive our Lord sacramentally, we cannot offer communion of reparation in this sense, but nevertheless I believe that our Lord also accepts our spiritual communions if we offer them as communions of reparation. So let us never forget in this crisis our brothers and sisters who are in need, especially in spiritual need course also in physical need. In October 1918 Jacinta had an apparition of Our Lady telling her that she would soon take her and Francesco to heaven. In spite of their grave sickness both children insisted to walk to the church to make Eucharistic adoration and to prostrate themselves to pray for hours. They knelt with their heads on the ground as the angel had instructed them to do. Right now many faithful are not able to go physically to church, but again we can send the angels and adore in spirit our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Things were moving fast. Francesco died on April 4, 1919 due to the Spanish flu. Jacinta had to wait almost a year more to go home. Formerly, one of Jacinda's greatest fears was to be away from home and to die alone. First she was put into the hospi hospital in Orang, which is a city very close to Fatima, and later on she was moved to Lisbon, where she had to undergo surgery. Two of her ribs has, 
were removed. To save many sinners, she declined to be fully anesthetized. We see her again, this great soul, her immense generosity to do everything to save souls. After her immense growth through prayer and sacrifice, fears had disappeared in a certain sense. On February 19th, she asked the chaplain of the hospital for Holy Communion and the extreme unction and told him she would die the next night. The chaplain, however, did not believe her. Next morning, they found her dead in her bed. Jacinta had died alone as she had foretold. Though it was always her greatest fear to die alone, she wanted to consciously make this sacrifice. Let us sum up the lessons of the angel. In the first apparition, the angel instructed the children, Pray, pray very much. It is also a call for all of us to intensify our prayer life. That we pray at least every day the rosary. If you already pray a rosary, maybe we can pray two rosaries. There are so many people who do not pray the rosary. We should also meditate on scripture every day. The faithful are not able to attend Mass right now, but I hope all of you have a missile. And so it would be good to go through the Mass text for every day. Then it is also a great opportunity to train ourselves to walk always in the presence of God. The Church also recommends to the faithful to pray the Liturgy of the Hours. Then during the day we should often simply make ejaculatory prayers. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, save souls. Jesus, help all those befallen by the coronavirus. Jesus, Mary, heal the sick. Let no one die today without your grace. Then the second lesson of the angel was, make of everything a sacrifice. And above all that we accept the sacrifices God sends us. So let us begin or intensify to live a sacrificial life. That we do not simply decide and make plans according to what we like, but really what is really good. That we often during the day renounce little things for love of God and for love of neighbor. Such sacrifices build up a tremendous strength in our lives and our souls that then we can also face the sacrifices God sends us. And finally the third lesson of the angel about Holy Communion. So in the context of the crisis that we now intensify our spiritual communions. Send your angel to church and to Mass. Stir up your desire for Holy Communion. Adore our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, even you cannot be there in church. Console your God, as the angel Fatima said, and plead for all mankind that this crisis may become a time of grace, a returning to God with our whole hearts. Let us pray for our own conversion, for the conversion of the Church in general, for the conversion of the Church in the United States, for the conversion of our country, for the conversion of the whole world. At the end of this talk, let us pray the prayer of the angel. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly and I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifferences by which he is offended, and by the infinite merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg of you the conversion of poor sinners. May God bless you all.